Happy Sabbath everyone and welcome to our morning inspiration Saturday February 17 2024 I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will be with you today and for those of you who will be going into the temple to worship today I pray that you will experience the power of God rain down in your life and may you worship him today in spirit and in truth and for those who will not be in the temple today, I pray that God will still pour his blessing upon you and continue to guide you. Our reading today comes to us from Matthew chapter 22, reading verses 1 to 14. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by a parable, and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servant to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again he sent forth another servant, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready, come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants, and entreated them spitefully, and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wrought, and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which are bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid them to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how comest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into utter darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen and i say amen we give god thanks today for his word now the parable of the wedding garment in these verses it opens before us a lesson of high consequences by the wedding garment in the parable it is represented by the pure and the spotless character of Christ, true followers. It says the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. It is the righteousness of Christ, is unblemished character that through faith he has imparted unto us who receive him as our personal savior. And the white robe, this is represented by innocence. Now, do you remember in the Garden of Eden, while Adam and Eve was there in the Garden of Eden, before they sinned, they were naked. But they weren't aware that they were naked because why they weren't aware? Because at that time, there was no sin and they had on the pure white robe of innocent or the righteousness of Christ. So the righteousness of Christ covered them. And that is why you realize after they sin, that righteousness was removed. And so instantly they realized that they were naked. But before that, before sin, they, they had no reason to be concerned because they were already clothed with the righteousness of Christ. Now, we understand based on that, that sin 
strip us of our garment. That is what sin does. And so, that is why Christ has to provide for us a new garment. So we cannot enter into the wedding supper or the marriage supper without the righteousness of Christ or without that garment that is already prepared. So I can't go in my own garment because it is not sufficient. It is filthy. The Bible says that we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Without the righteousness of Christ, we can't be saved. And so there's nothing in us from which we can clothe our soul and make it appear holy or righteous. The only thing that can do that is the righteousness of Christ after he cleanses us and wash us and purify us and so we must understand that while God called all of us to the marriage supper we can't remain the same so there are many of us who when we decide to come to God we want to keep doing the same things we were doing before so we expect the lord to save us in our sin and not from our sin it cannot work that way we have to be willing to take off our own filthy garment our own righteousness and put on the righteousness of christ we have to go to that transformation so the invitation is freely given come Come to the marriage supper. Come. I want to save you. That is why I sent my only begotten son. That the world can be saved. But after you have come. You must put off that old man. And then take on this new man. In Christ. Now the garment. It will never cover deceit. Impurity, corruption or hypocrisy or any other sin we must let go of those sin we must confess them if we are to be saved that's the deal breaker can't hold on to them so if you were doing this at one point in your life and now you come to christ you have to let it go it doesn't matter how much you loved it the new you is not compatible with the old you if you understand what i'm saying the eyes of god is on all of us we cannot hide anything from god we may be able to hide things from man or from our friends and our family but god see our heart he knows our deep thoughts we must understand that we have to put off all those things that will create that separation between us and God. And we must teach our children also that they must choose for themselves this royal robe. So the robe is being given out at the wedding ceremony or at the wedding supper. And that is why we must introduce our children to him who is able to clothe them in his righteousness. To cover them. Don't keep away your children away from God. And so it is very important for us to know that if we do not have on the righteousness of Christ, we will be kicked out of the wedding supper the bible says that this guest because he did not put on his wedding garment he was thrown out of the wedding supper in utter darkness do you want to be thrown out in utter darkness none of us do you want to be lost no i'm sure none of us want to be lost and so let us accept the righteousness of Christ 
so that we can be saved and so that we can be covered under his protection. Amen. And so it is with us. If we refuse to take on the righteousness of Christ, if we refuse to confess our sins, if we refuse to repent, if we think that we can be saved in our sinful state, we make a great mistake. Because God will not save anybody in their sin. He will save you from your sins. He will save me from my sins. And in the last days, when it's all said and done, if you and I aren't ready, the Bible says that when he comes and start to pour out judgment on the wicked and those who refuse him, those who refuse his garment, they are going to have regrets. The Bible said they will be reaping and gnashing of teeth all because they did not want to take the robe that was prepared for them. And so I encourage all of us today, may we accept Christ's righteousness. May we repent and may we change from our evil ways. May we ask God to cleanse us those things that, that we are hiding in our hearts. Those little, little, little sin as we love to call them, which no sins are little. But whatever it is that we are holding on to that we know we can't go to heaven with, let us let it go. Let go and let God, because that's the only way you and I will be saved if we have on the righteousness of Christ. May God continue to bless you and may God continue to keep you as you seek and as I seek, as we seek to walk in his righteousness. Amen.